Um, uh, 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 welcome. That was bad. No, welcome. do it without stammering. Welcome to The Downside. My name is Joe Marcos Cerezi. I'm here with my co-host, Russell Daniels. Hello, Russell. How are you Hi, doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you? And we're joined uh, by a, a stand-up comedian and uh, probably the, the the person to bring booze bag back into the lexicon. Ooh, wow. Uh, uh, welcome, uh, uh, Mark Norman. Thank you. Good to be here in this tiny, tiny apartment. This apartment makes me feel better about mine. This is a <laughs> tight spot. There's all a right. whole wing you're missing over well, there. Well, uh, congrats to you on all your success. This is The Downside. <laughs> You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi. All right, my name is John Marco Cerezi. I'm realizing I'm not recording on this side, but that's oh, fine. God. We're here. I'll tell my editor what a fucking nightmare. You know what it was like in the beginning? Oh, I couldn't do it again. Yeah. Oh my god, it was hell. I mean, I got mugged three times in a year. Uh, no <laughs> money, and just getting up and on open mics, and no one laughing, and just trying to figure it out. Going to road gigs and losing money. Taking of course, the, the Greyhound, all that. It's shit. It's funny. I was just talking about podcasts. That's all I was. I was thinking of when I said that. And you were like, I was mugged three times. I was like, <laughs> on the podcast, really? <laughs> three people were like, this guy's. Oh, you steals about- audio equipment. What year, what year were you <laughs> mugged? You starting three comedy. Times. Say it again. What year were you mugged three times? Like, uh, what year was 2008. that? Wow. Yeah, twice in Brooklyn, once in Hell's Kitchen. It all was always my year. fault. Yeah, one what year. What were they like? Well, they're all different. Right. Uh, much okay. like a snowflake. You thought it was the same? They, they have like a how-to? <laughs> no, no, no. It's like just, a wiki like, how-to? I guess there's a, a spectrum of how violent or how aggressive or, you know, like, oh, uh, yeah. just curious of, like, what was the worst mugging of the three? None of them were that bad. I come from New Orleans, which is way scarier than yes. New York, by the way. But uh, one, I got knocked out and then... They took the shit out of my pockets, and I woke up in the middle, and they knocked me out again. That sounds bad. So that was the that was, that was the worst, but still not that bad. Hit with your fist. Yeah, yeah, like to four your guys. Oh, my God. How yeah. were, like, what you said, it was your fault uh, at some point. You said. I was always blacked out, kind of like oh, wobbling home, like gotcha. bouncing off the walls, and uh, I fell asleep in a little alcove because I was so drunk. Oh. And then I woke up to guys going through my pockets, and I went, what the fuck? And he hit me, and I went out. And then I woke up again, and he hit me again. Wow. Yeah. Well, Russell, you kind of skipped the whole uh, scenario of this podcast, uh, jumping right to New Orleans and mugging, but thanks. Um, <laughs> welcome so, to- I was curious. Well, yes, I know. Okay. We'll get to it. Okay. I, uh, welcome to The Downside. Uh, uh, this is a podcast. We, we explore the negatives of our lives, all the sad things in life. We, we try not to any, no toxic positivity here. Um, I just got back. I just took a vacation with, with my, my girlfriend, Tova. I'm sure you, uh, I had to cancel something because of a gig. Oh, yeah, been there. And so it was like... The ladies love that. Oh, yeah. And it, it was definitely a, like, I have to make it up. It yes. was like, a, it was like, a, it was like I don't want to do it. You figure out a thing. And I don't do things. No, so I reached don't. out to my boys. You had no ideas. I did not respond. To you did that. not respond no. to the group text of, no, please help me. No, I figured you were in me. good hands. Yeah, Everyone yeah. Everyone else did. So originally there was an idea of, like, getting a hotel... I live in the Lower East Side, getting a hotel on the Lower East Side, and I just, I couldn't, it's one of those things where I'm like, so you just want us to spend money yes. to feel like we've, we've, we've sacrificed. Punishment. And these hotels, you know, there, there was it's like crazy. a pool she wanted to use, but you had to spend 150 bucks at the bar. Ah. I was like, get the fuck out of here. Listen, I'm all about that. Yeah, of course. Of course, you spend 150, no pool. No. You, you jump in the lake. You're yeah, like, yeah. I thought it was the pool. Yeah. Uh, so we went to uh, Point Pleasant Beach, New Jersey. Hey, there you go. Yeah, I got a cheap motel room, cheap motel room, wow. two hundred bucks, uh, and we went to the boardwalk. Got ripped, ripped off. You know, you, twenty four bucks to go onto the beach. Yeah, that, oh, very yeah. cold. Yeah, uh, we did all the 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 challenges, the games, dance dance revolution. Oh, boy. on the boardwalk, you're like a dad out here. Is oh, that like, dad keep, thing? Your stepdad, like keep the kids happy. I'll take them to the beach. It's cheap. We'll play video <laughs> games. I'll get them a stuffed animal. I love the games though. I hate them. You it's all, all games. A, it's yeah, all he's a, a games boy. Well, it's all a grift. But if you know it's a grift, you only do the ones that are fun. I'm not doing the sure. ones where I'm like. That's what's got to be tough with a kid, where the you're claw. he wants he wants the the this big stuffed yeah. animal. You're like, please, I'll buy it for you. Let's do something that takes time. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's all about killing time. Yes, <laughs> you yeah. want to get through the day. Yeah. So we got we we got this. Uh, she got a, a juice box of again. like weed, a weed. Ju- oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but again, it's all an elevation. You go to these. I just did a Mohegan Sun. Yeah. And you're at these arcades, and you're like, this is a 
casino. It was the first time it really dawned on me. This is a casino for kids, and you get tickets, ah. and you go to these prizes, and the prizes you're losing money. Of course, they're winning. Of course, but they're uh, that's a good bit. That could be a bit. I, I've been thinking about it. The, the idea is, you know, there you do it for uh, you know like pogs and stickers at a casino. It's for dinner and sex work, something like right. that. Something. Yeah. Well, the roller coaster, you get a thrill, and with the blackjack, when you're winning, it's thrilling. So it's the same up and down world, but yeah. uh, one is losing money and one is. Puking. No, are you a rides guy? Do you do the rides? No, I hate the rides. Why? Hate I don't the like rides. them either. You hate them? Yeah, no. Let me tell you what I... I they, like a conversation, a beer, yes, a fireplace, uh, a yes, couch. Yes, I'm, I'm. I don't like... I remember as a kid, I didn't like Chuck E. Cheese. Uh-huh. And as an adult, I don't like casinos. I don't like with that you. thing. I, I just would rather be in a bar with, uh, like, not too loud, but, like, I can talk and we can just, like, that's, sit there for hours. That's, that's it. That's where I'm loud at. bar, no good. No. I want to no. chat. I want to talk. Yeah. I feel like the rides are embarrassing because you need all this to have a good time i can have a good time with my buddies that's I, it I, you get to experience John Marco something wants so to be in a rare. room that we have to escape i can't believe they last i see them i'm like who's going there <laughs> oh my god oh. well russell missed it for for my birthday we did uh you went it, to a room it was called you, rage cage where you go in a room you get, oh, you get crowbars and bats I like activities. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't like conversation. I like a little bit of structure <laughs> to my socializing. See, but even right. escape room, you, you we all have a shared goal. We don't have difference of opinion. We, we all have oh, one opinion. Let's get out of the room. I like the idea of smashing things, but I think that for me, the context, the framing of putting it in a experience where I'm having to pay for it, I think I would have more fun smashing a TV just out in the free just world. Yes. Willy nilly. Like, out in the free world, not in like I'm paying ten or fifteen dollars to go into a room yes. and put protective gear on. I wanna like I want it to be wild. Wait, like, I wanna just like do it. When you go through when you finish all the keyboards and the whatnot, you mm-hmm. then can pay more like a la carte. To kill so you someone. can be like to kill someone. <laughs> Fifty bucks. We'll send in the guy from the front desk. You can take a crowbar to him. That'll, that'll, that'll be an app. You wanna kill somebody, use this app. Um, but the one ride, we did one ride, and it was, and again, it's like a boardwalk, uh, so everything's miniature, it's more for kids. This is for children. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. we did the uh, the fall. You go up really oh, high. Oh, I hate that. One. I hate it. That's oh, a diarrhea machine. It's so scary, oh. but there was this, there was this. Uh, and you were, were you high? Hi, yeah. Oh. Oh, I was freaking out oh. in my head. Oh, no. and it started to rain, and I, I, I'm that guy. I asked like the, the guy, you know, the 12 year old working the machine. I'm yeah. like, with the rain, is it okay? And he was like, yeah. Nah, they don't give a shit. They don't give no, a they shit. Don't know. They don't give a shit. We've they all don't... seen those viral videos of the fat kid like. Ah! Yeah, I relate to that. I empathize. I'm yeah. that kid. You freak out. Oh my god! Of course, it's well, all unnatural. Plus, get... those things go wrong all the time. People die. Not. All the time. Enough that I hear about it. You know, think about if I'm hearing about it more than three times in my life, that's all the time. You know what I mean? I think one story that stuck with me was some water slide where the kid went up and it went high enough there was something up here and decapitated. Whoa. So now I'm really scared of water slides. Of course. But I saw there was this one girl, she she went before me and she was there with her like your dad. And she was sobbing so intensely that it to me, like that ride, that's how she learned that she's gonna die someday. Like there's something about that ride. <laughs> yeah. And she looks to her father for comfort. What is he doing? Woo! Yeah, of yeah, Put yeah. your arms up, it's more fun. Yeah. And I feel like that's, I think that's kind of like with life. You're scared about dying when you're younger and then as you get older at some point, you're like, you know what? Put your hands up, yeah. enjoy it. Right. Yeah. But that little girl came off and she was, she was traumatized. Wow. She was not ready for what that was. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I would be. I'm not into it. It makes me think though, I'm always like, all right, well, if you fell out of plane, you know, sometimes I think about if I had if I died that way. I went skydiving sure. once. Oh yeah. And I'm like, I guess you, you would have like a minute, two minutes to like Enjoy what are you gonna it? do? You're gonna flip? Right. If you're falling out of a plane, like are you gonna scream? Are you gonna go woo? If you're gonna die at the end, no parachute. I'm not gonna woo. Um <laughs> the whole way down, I'm gonna be thinking about how I wanna keep living. Uh, I've often what a told waste you of this your before. last two like, minutes. I don't care. I, I'm just saying. I'm not. I, I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying. Um, I know that I want to live. You know. Yeah, I, but we all do. But Most you know of us. it's going to end anyway. So you might I know, as well but there's just it. something about. I know that in the moment I wouldn't be able to do that. I would. You know, you'd be thinking like, oh, maybe like I can land somehow. <laughs> that doesn't kill me, but uh, it, you wouldn't be able That's, to. You're gonna like. You're gonna try to like I, I expand don't, I know your shirt. Makes sense, but I think hope everyone, the wind catches. I think everyone thinks that they could try to do something. You know, you yeah. try to do everything you can. I always had the thought I'd, I'd land in a cross and like make people think oh like maybe Ooh, maybe this was the guy we should have given him Is more. Is that spots. what you thought when you went skydiving? 
Why well, I was I was planning on making it when I went skydiving. Oh, okay. There was something surreal about skydiving where I can't do it. I, I mean, I was I'm scared of heights too. I'm not that guy. I'm not like yeah. skydive guy. Were you attached to someone? You were. Yeah, you yeah, were. tandem jumping. Yeah, yeah tandem, for sure. Tandem. For sure. Yeah, yeah. But uh, when it was scary going up, small plane, you could feel the clouds. But when I was about to jump, I swear to God, there was something in my brain that was like, I'm not. I can't die. I'm I'm the main yes. character. I can't. I can't do it. That's human, uh, like an instinct kicks in. I think it's why people think they'll win the lottery. It's like, I got this. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. This is going to yeah. work out. You know, it's the same weirdo survival thing. Me, yeah. it's me. I'm the hero. I can't die. But like, it was, that part was not scary. And I think it was just something in me was like, the fear, the anxiety was too much. My brain was like, just, just lie to him. Yes. <laughs> just, <laughs> just lie to him. Yeah, yeah. Make exactly. him feel good. <laughs> exactly. So, I wonder how many people falling from the sky have thought, I'm going to make it. I'm gonna land in a pencil, pencil in the know. ocean, and I'll go whoop know. and come oh, right God. back. Up. Right. How how do you want to die? How? Just never. Uh, no, definitely like, you know, everyone wants the in your sleep thing. Sure. You know? That's what everyone wants. I think. What do you? Oh, you look at me like sleep. that's crazy. I, but I don't want like, someone. To I don't want to think I'm waking up the next morning. I want to like as I'm going to sleep. I want to be so high on drugs. You I don't know, know what's what. You want to know you're gonna die, is what you're saying. I want. I don't want to know. All my exes. I want it to just around the bed. happen and not be traumatic. Is what I okay. is my thing. You know. Good. Good. How would you? How do you want? I'd go OD. Really? Yeah. Because oh, wow. then you at least you're high. You're like, give me the heroin needle in the arm. Boom. I'm out. Sure. Yeah. Are you thinking of starting heroin or <laughs> or just like right when you're right at that age? Like, yeah. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. How grandma die at 98 of a heroin overdose? She yeah. tried heroin for the first time. I mean, they should the be. They, there should. They're who should be doing heroin. I mean, they're old. You got nothing left. You're going to die in two days anyway. Of course. Might as well live, baby. Well, that's where you really need to legalize drugs, in my mind. It's LSD yes. for people who are going to die. Let them feel. Yeah. Let them, let them yeah, have that yeah. feeling where they're like, oh, I'm going into the universe. And Yeah, yeah kids yeah. have their whole life ahead of you. You don't need drugs. You're like 15. You're, you're got a boner. You can yeah. get drunk. You're not hungover. <laughs> There's young, young people around. Like, you don't need drugs. The old lady, Gertrude. Maybe that's how they need to redo drug education, just being like, listen. You're going to need them. If people, yes. if kids knew eventually you'll get to do this crazy right. shit, maybe they'd be more chill now. Yeah. I think so. Also, there's a weird health kick going around. Like, I feel like everybody drank their face off and did blow and all this shit. Now, I feel like kids are, they're eating kale and like yogaing and all that and drinking less. I wonder if it'll come back around though. Probably. I mean, I think the people who are drinking are going to keep drinking. But yeah, I, I, yeah. I agree that there's a younger... There's a thing where it's I feel like pot's healthier. gonna hit the market and kids will be like, no, you maybe, we're not the pot. We're just CBD, just CBD stores. Oh, yeah. My dad had a thing with pot, so I don't want to do it. <laughs> I um, yeah. So so you we, we were talking just before you you grew up in New Orleans. Russell yeah. loves New Orleans. It's hey, his favorite favorite place. Favorite place. Fun town. But not, you grew up great, in Treme. Not a great place to grow up. Yeah. So you you grew up the, the in your the whole, city. Wow. In Treme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Black neighborhood, white family, got robbed constantly. We were broke too. They were always disappointed when they came in. And uh <laughs> it was a weird childhood. Yeah. Um what uh yeah, what's your relation now with the city? Like My how? parents they moved, they they're old, they got on the outskirts of the town and they're I They're doing just, LSD wherever yeah, they are, just they're doing heroin. Out. And I just visit them and uh, go into the city. I know the whole city like the back of my hand, but uh, they just open up a comedy club there. I, I heard they they open a small one, like kind of an indie club. Yeah, I, I guess I was always surprised. I've been there twice: once for his bachelor party, mm -hmm. once for a gig. That there wasn't more. Co There's yeah. so much music. Yeah, I guess it's tough when the music's really going to be like. It's a we're gonna turn this down. I do a little. I think it's a relatively small city for it what is. people think. It is like people think of it as being a bigger city than it is. It's a pretty small city. Um, but yeah, I uh, I'm supposed to go at the end of the month. I don't know. I'm still we're still figuring out if we're going to go because of everything you know. But uh, they're getting power back now. But uh, oh, because of that. And yeah, COVID, everything. I mean, but we, it was everything. like one of those situations where we prepaid, uh, but mm. then you read things and people are like, don't come because blah, blah, blah. And you're right. like, but I, I really want it. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. We're figuring it out. It's a boozy town and they don't want to sit and listen to our thoughts on Uber or anxiety. No, you know? exactly. Like, I'm here to get away. I'm <laughs> yeah. trying to get drunk and listen to a guy, a black guy with a trombone. You know? Yes. That's why I go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well, we got so drunk. I don't know if we ever talked we about it. We did. We had... 
I'm not a huge drinker, but it was a bachelor party. I'm trying. He's to, more trying of a weed guy. Myself. I'm more of a drink guy. But we got a. Uh, it was called purple. The drink was called purple. Oh, from and the it was just like from never from clear the purple and drink. purple slushy. And it was one of these moments we were halfway through. The I've drink. never seen you that drunk. We just we just looked around the table and it was like we had taken like an edible. We were yeah. like, "Are you guys <laughs> wasted?" I right. fell asleep on the floor. Yeah. You, wow. I, I was. I, wait, he almost it was got hit. I think it was ever clear. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. shit's crazy. He almost got That's hit crazy. by uh, one of those carriages. Horse. <laughs> you stepped out what? right in front of it, and we like pulled you. You almost. Got oh, I almost hit. got hit. So Whoa. close. To being yeah, hit. yeah, yeah. And you had no idea. You it was a no fucking. Idea. Yeah. We went to a nice restaurant where we had to wear a coat and t- or coat yeah. or whatever. And oh, so they made yeah. me put on like this extra large chef jacket because I was wearing a tank top. Uh, Just the same. But very southern. So so you were robbed and uh but I, I know this thing that you you weren't home, but your parents were tied up. Wow, you heard about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. I did my research. Yeah, that, that I didn't know that was out there. Wow. Yeah. Two guys broke in. I was at a Mardi Gras parade. I was 14. Oh, it was on Mardi Gras. Well, it's a two-week-long right, thing. Right, right, right. Okay, wow. It was on one of the nights, and uh, two guys broke in, tied the parents up, <sighs> you know, guns, where's the jewelry, where's the money, all that shit. And your brother. And my brother. And how old was your brother? He was probably 15, 16. Ooh. Jesus fucking Christ. And, uh, yeah, just took everything, you know, ran out. My mom had to go to therapy. Everybody's all fucked up. I show up. I see 20 cop cars at the house. The lights are going. What do you think? Did you think your parents were dead when I you first saw that? I thought they were dead. I thought it was over. I was like, it. It was a long time coming. The whole neighborhood hates us. We're the outsiders, you know, and uh, I just figured somebody broke in and shot somebody. That's what I thought. Yeah. And then I, uh, you know. Did you see, were they, like, did you see them and run in their arms and it was like, oh my. I did. I I wept. I started crying. I mean, I ran in and there's cops everywhere and I saw them interviewing my mom and I was like, oh, oh, thank God. And of course I had that, you know, 15 year old moment or 14 where I was like, let's go get them. So me and my friends drove around looking for the car and trying to fight the guys or whatever. Oh my God. And, uh, Did they you have them. a weapon? Not, like, no, a, no. We just went and just, just like fist fight these guys. I don't know what we were. Th- we were just on hopped up on adrenaline, and I was angry. I was an angsty kid. And how old were you? I time? was probably fourteen. Wow. Yeah, I was a freshman in high school, and uh, this was like a new. This was a big deal, you know. I was freaking out, and then uh, yeah, so we drove around. We never found him, but they caught the guy at the ATM. Two guys put him in prison. Thank yeah. God. Are they, do you know, do you like know their names? Did you? Uh, actually, I do an improv troupe with two of them. No, no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, of uh, course not. They were like junkies or whatever. Yeah. The thing about, um, uh, I, I fell in love with New Orleans probably like six or so years ago. I went for the first time and I was, it was one of the, when I was a kid, I, 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 it was the thing of when I first came to New York and I was like, I love that place. I want, I want to live there. Yeah. And I had the same thing with New, with New Orleans. And I think I like, a part of it that's a little dangerous, but it also is a thing of like, you know, you get used to certain ways that you are here in New York and you're like, okay, I, I get how, um, the homeless here work and things like yeah, that. And yeah. it's a, it is different it's there different. where, where you're like the, the energy of it is like suddenly you'll be on a street and there's only like there. I like in New York that there's so many people yeah. <laughs> that you feel, even if you're not, you feel much safer. And like the, the thing of yes. I, one of the first times I went to New Orleans, That's I was like, difference. I was on a, we, I, I think my thing was like in, uh, I can't remember. I, I think it was the Marini technically mm-hmm. where I was staying. And I remember like I was unloading some stuff. I, I had a car there. I was unloading some stuff and like a guy just got into the car Whoa. with me and he was like, Give me money, and I was like, I was like, I, I was like, oh, I, I had bags. And I was like, I don't have any actual money, and I was like, I like looked, and there was like, oh, some change in the thing, and I gave him, you know, what I had there, and he was like, he was like, thank you, and then he left. But it was like the it's really thing polite of like, like that. getting in the car. I was like, that was such a that's aggressive. That, that doesn't seem to happen like in in New York as much. Like in the, I don't know, it was just the way like you don't. When I went to L.A., I felt the same way, where I was like. Oh, it's different here how yeah. things operate. And and you just if you don't know a city, it feels scarier to you. Yes. And so. it's it's more lawless there. Like in New York, if you got in somebody's car, if you were a homeless guy, they'd probably beat you up or be like, What the fuck is this? and pull you out. Then yeah. people would film it. It'd be a scene. In New Orleans, it's like, I'm with this guy, it's me and him. Yeah. How am that, I that we were this? the only two people on the street. So I was like, I was like, Oh, here and then he was like, Oh, it's great. And he was fine. It yeah. wasn't it wasn't but I, at first I was like, Oh my god, he's in the car with me and I didn't see him. So right. Yeah, it's just a thing that you don't know. That's so scary. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me I, when when I first moved to Harlem, it was so funny. I was with, uh, I said I moved to Harlem. This is the first time moving to New York City, and uh, I had met the super, and it was a black man with with dreadlocks, 
and I had met him. I knew his name, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then my roommate moved. He brought his taxi car with all his bags, all his luggage and stuff, and has taken out all the bags. And the super comes up to be like, oh, do you want me to help you with that? And I was like, sure, of course. But my roommate, who had not met the super, thought that some random guy uh, had come to the car. And it was one of those moments where, like, uh, I, I feel like he got caught, you know, uh, 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 being racist. Yeah, yeah. Because he, he didn't, he thought I was so naive that, like, a random guy came up to the car. Yeah. And it was clearly informed by the fact that, that it was, like, a black man with dreadlocks. Sure. And my roommate was like, what are you doing? Uh, and it was such, and I, I, I don't think anyone knows, but it was one of those, one of those where, I, you know, I'm sure he felt, he felt terrible. Right. All these things. But it was one of those moments where, you know, he didn't know the neighborhood. He's just like everything's. Yeah. He's he's cautious. Yes, he's freaking yes. out. He's it's the same way. You know, you walk around. I can't imagine how many people have just come up to me asking for directions. Yeah. And I've been like, sorry, I can't. Yeah. Because I've done other times where someone talks to you. Yes. And the moment they start talking to you, there's there's a there's a sob story. And you're like, fuck. I, yeah. I'm stuck here. When I walk and I don't have any money on me and I can honestly say, I'm sorry, I don't have any money. I feel so good. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, I don't have any cash. Well, in me right now. I did that the other night. I was d dining out at like a outdoor restaurant on uh, Friday night. And um, a guy came up with flowers to the table of us. And he was like, he's like, hey, can you do, do you gentlemen want to buy the ladies some nice yeah, flowers? I and, flower, and I was yeah. like, no, 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 we, we don't have any. Um, we don't. <laughs> we don't have any cash. And, and no one had cash. And then he goes, I take Venmo, too. Ah! And then we were like, I was like. Oh no, we don't want that. And then you're like, so you should have just said that. And I was like, Ooh. Oh my god! And I was like, fair enough, fair Snippy. enough. But I still don't want the flowers. But fair enough. It was it was so funny. He was just like, you should have just said that. And I was like, Oh, yeah. you're very nice. I'm sure some people go go fuck yourself. Well, I tried things. to let you I, off easy. I, was, I had a conversation with a friend because I was like, I I don't like being trapped. I don't yes. like being trapped at a thing and Escape being like, I, I don't like that thing of like, <laughs> I, 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 there's something about it. If I can't in New York, I don't care if someone says something while I'm on the move, but I don't like when I was like very much like having like a thing and, and, and it felt like, oh, you've trapped me here. Yeah. And, and there's no, the only way you, that you feel good about it is that if I give you money, I, w I was in Italy, in Italy and I don't want to buy flowers. They were ugly. Flowers. In Italy, there was a, there was a lot of flower guys. I remember yeah. being in, uh, f what's the one with all the water? Florence, Venice, Venice, yeah, Venice, Venice. Yeah. Venice. And Canals. like, it was, it was like a hostel and I was like trying to flirt with someone and like, it was late at night and we're like talking like by a, a wall and this guy like comes right uh, up with the flowers and I was, I was stuck. Yeah. I mean, and they're just aggressive, just aggressive in a very different way. Yeah. Yeah. It and seems like Italy doesn't have dating apps because everything is like, hey, mommy, on the street. Like, it's all uh, catcalling. It's like, yeah. get on Tinder, you psychos. What are we doing here? A Tinder. Um, were you uh, mad at your parents? Oh, oh, I had one more question. Go about, for it. But if you're going to keep Nora on Well, yeah, were you mad at your parents for staying in this fucking neighborhood? I mean, like, looking back on it, it seems it's like... A, it's a, it has a rich historical thing. Yeah, it sounds like you were mugged frequently. You were yeah. put through trauma. Yeah. You were living in uh, what was like some big space. Giant that, mansion. That Dilapidated. You, that they made an Airbnb? They made it into a bed and breakfast because we ran out of oh, income. Oh, that's so why they didn't to, like you. Huh? Is that why they didn't like you? Because you made it into a bed and breakfast? The neighborhood. No, no. Because no. That, that's a, I feel like when I read things now, that's, in Treme especially, has been so oh, the gentrified. Airbnb. They hate and, it. And why they, do they hate it so much? Well, because it's ruining the neighborhood. It, yeah. And it was like, it was like a neighborhood that was more affordable yes. near the French Quarter where you could like, you could go, you could walk to the French Quarter. And now it's been like overtaken by Airbnbs and, and things like that. Yeah. And it's like, they hate it. Like, that's why, like for a while I was like, oh, I want to buy a place in New Orleans. And then I'm like, well, I don't like, I can't because the idea would be like, if I did do it, I would want to like rent it out when I'm not there. And then it's not a city where that's a, a, a thing that is like people do like it, it, you, you can do it, but it's also hated. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Especially that neighborhood. They, they try to make it illegal. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. a big thing. Yeah. And I get it. It's like, you know, yeah. it's, dry, it's ruining the neighborhood. I get it too, know. but when I go to town, I use them. It's <laughs> <You know, laughs> so cheap. I got this no. huge New Orleans house. I know, you know, it's nice. I know. But I won't use them if they're illegal, but they're not illegal yet, so might as well help out a person who lives in San Antonio. Yeah. Oh, God. And so, okay, so you were there, and I'm sorry, I have all these notes. I mean, you you were a bedwetter. You talk about it in yeah, your, your stand-up. Yeah, bedwetter. And, I mean, it feels like it must have been connected to this. I mean. Yeah, I'm 37. I didn't realize that until I was, like, 35. Really? Yeah. Really? I was just like, oh, I was a bedwetter. Kids wet the bed. Some kids do, some kids don't. I was a bedwetter, and apparently it's got to be all trauma. Like, my therapist was 
we had a good month of like, he's like, what? What? Whoa, that's crazy. No wonder this. No wonder that. So, uh huh. Had a lot to unload, but I didn't know. Like, I had sex with a 55 year old woman when I was 16. He's like, you're a survivor. I'm like, what? That was awesome. <laughs> I, I was like the kick of high school. I had no idea any of that was bad. I was like, how I, did you I was into it? Was this on Tinder? Who, yeah. Who no, was this? this is 2000 and 2000. It was the night before the millennium change. So wow. Y2K was in the air. Yeah, it felt like the world might end. Exactly. It did. Yeah, it was like skydiving. Like, fuck it, let's go for it. And she was on a balcony flashing, and I was 16, looking up. Like, this is pre-internet porn. <laughs> and she goes, "You want to come up?" And I said, "Yeah." And the there's more details, but uh, yeah. First she, time? This is in New time. Orleans. First time. Your virginity. first time was a 55-year-old woman. Yeah, maybe oh, 50. My. But, it, you know, when you're that young, everybody looks like, wow. you know, Jennifer Aniston. They all look wow. like That is funny. It's like, it's like a 28-year-old, and she's like, I'm not fucking 50, you <laughs> fucking yeah. child. Oh, my God. We're relatively the same age. I'm a little younger, but... I remember the millennium, and I was so far from having sex uh, at the time is what I remember. I mean, it came and out of nowhere. And that is wild to be like a 55-year-old woman. Wow. Yeah, good times. And great. where, where? so this is in New Orleans? In the uh, Ramada Hotel on Bourbon. Oh. That's such wow. a different first time. because Was she a tourist or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Her husband was there <gasps> the whole time. He didn't watch, but he was on the balcony. Oh. Yeah, he just like, closed the door. So I think they've he done He closed this. it. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was wild. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, she's an animal. I just think about, I lost my virginity when I was 18, and it was senior of high school, and she had had sex before. And even that, I felt like, oh boy, she knows so much more about this shit than I do. Yeah. And I just can't imagine a 50-year-old just like, I feel so, I just be, lie there. Yes. I just lie there. You tell me what to do. I'm not, I'm not taking it. I'm not going to be like flip over. Right. When I'm fucking sick. Of course, of I course. I mean, that's crazy. She directed me, and she was very sweet, very nice. I think she got off on the fact that, like, I was clueless, and I was a teenager. How's your therapist? How, how do you... Pro it's one of those things where, like, if someone's like, you're a survivor, and you're like, it was cool when I was 16. Like, I don't even know how you unpack that shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a great time. It was all consensual. I wanted to do it. Yeah, I would do it again. She told she's you that probably dead. Oh, she's got to be dead. She's got to be dead. Yeah, the husband I'm sure killed her. They had they were kind of bikery <laughs> and methy. Yeah. So, oh, so you did you meet him and talk to him or nah? I came have up. a cigarette on the balcony <laughs> afterwards with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great tits. I know, right? Yeah, no, she. Uh, I went up there with two friends, so there was three of us. Okay. So then we knock on the door. She opens it, and he goes, "Which one is it?" And she points to me, and he took them on the balcony, and they had a couple beers and oh. We went they, to town. They definitely have done this before. Wow. Oh, he yeah. took your friend on the porch? Oh, yeah, the balcony out right was on the bourbon. Was your friend disappointed? Was he like, oh, I... It was, so, was he worried? Maybe he had to go with this guy. He's like, I'll guess. go fuck him on the porch. I definitely was, would be a balcony friend. I, <laughs> I, I That's very stressful to me, this situation. I mean... It was a different time. Balcony friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just love imagining that couple, like, uh, you know, they, like, we go to New Orleans tw once a year, and uh, she just... <laughs> She just like, flashed her tits. The first sixteen-year-old that looks like, up. Which one is it? Like it was oh like my. fishing. I was like a like a, a bass. I was like I'm in. She reeled me up, and that was it. She she gutted me. And this was was she flashing? Was there a parade, or she was just flashing? It was out of the blue. It was bourbon. It was the it was People, the nineties, yeah. two thousand. You just flashed. People still do it. I mean, yeah. it's like a, even outside of you know carnival. It, does, people. Does your wife flash? No, my wife does not flash. But I've been there outside of like parade season or things and people people you know you'll just on if you're on bourbon people will you know still do it yeah ran it not as much i think probably at, at the height of things but people still i'm do sure it. the world has shifted a little i bit remember one time i saw a woman shouting out to the bottom can i flash everybody yeah. is everyone on the street okay i did right. see a woman one time there it was like a relative it was in the winter it was a little i think it might have been during carnival season but like not that busy and we were walking down bourbon and i saw an older woman and her husband walking down the street and people were on the balconies and kind of like some people were throwing beads and stuff and she very coyly pulled out one titty like and then looked at her husband and he was like he like was shocked and she just like pulled it up and was like i think <laughs> me and her husband were the only two people that saw it but it's like that kind of environment yeah, yeah, like, yeah. i'm yes. gonna do this just this once because i'm here right, i'm doing right. this thing you know yeah guys would whip it out it was very wild it was a wild scene back then this is pre-camera phone and everything so oh it was yeah, a different yeah. time yeah different before pictures before before phones Can you imagine before cameras. pictures in general where you had to have 20 20 minutes you had to You'd stand still with your dick out yeah, for someone to right, take a picture right <laughs> you just show someone a blur i swear it was a dick yeah how about the guy with the poof remember that guy with the poof camera yeah, yeah. you never get a dick on that well that's no. why i always think those old pictures that's why they look so unhappy is because mm. they had to hold it for 20 minutes 
And that I think sense. that's better because I feel like now you smile, you look at pictures, you're like, I was happy then. I was like, no, you weren't. <laughs> yeah, you're happy for you half weren't. a second. Right. Back then, you got to see what you felt like most of the time, yeah. which was just <laughs> a very stale yeah, mood. Yeah, the Dust Bowl. It was the Depression. They were all bummed. So look, was your was your is your is brother, uh, did your brother wet the bed too? Did he have anxiety or were you very different? We were different. He was uh, like a shut-in. He was a recluse. He was obsessed with computers. He was a kid with a, a DOS booklet when he was, you know, 12 and uh, now he is a computer programmer. He does very well. But uh, he was like, I'm not going out there. And I was like, I'm going out there. That was my whole thing. And he was like, good luck out there. He wasn't protective at all. We barely got out. We barely talked. Mm. But, yeah, we were completely different. And were you were you a funny growing up? Were you the funny guy? Were you the, in school? Yeah, I think the more un- I'm always uncomfortable. So the more uncomfortable I am, the more jokes I crack and... You know, the trauma and the child, you just felt out of place, the white kid in the black neighborhood, you know, always feeling different and weird. So you try to be accepted. And also my parents were workaholics. They were checked out. So if you got a good line in and you got a laugh, you were like, that was the hug. Uh The laugh was the hug. So what did they do? uh, Well, they were lawyers for a while. They hated it. You know, they'd tell me like, this guy's guilty, but I have to. Uh, defend him. I, I'm sick to my stomach. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And oh, then, God. Are lawyers even supposed to tell their kids that? Probably not. I think there's <laughs> something about, like, you can tell your spouse. Like, so I heard something recently about, like, one of the reasons, many reasons why they wanted gay marriage was, like, there's some rules of, there's some rules about spouses. Like, you can talk honestly with your spouse. Uh-huh. And mm. so, like, there's more attached to that title than one would think just out the oh, gate. Oh, interesting. But your kids, to, to tell your you're, you're boozing kid. Hey, he's guilty as fuck. Don't tell anybody. Yeah. Know, I'm like putting a transformer together. Like, is that right? Guilty, <laughs> huh? Manslaughter. How about that? You know? Yeah, it was pretty, pretty wild. But then they, they got out. Now my mom became a teacher and my dad got into real estate. So they're doing well now? Yeah, but still workaholic. Still obsessed. That's where I get it. I'm always doing sets and running You are a, 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 a workaholic. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just think this business is such a... We're so lucky to be able to do it. And it's so easy. I mean, it's hard to write jokes. But, like, getting up, performing, going from gig to gig, all these comics complain about it. I'm like, this is heaven. We could be in a cubicle. We could be – I mean, I was a furniture mover. I was a janitor. I did all the labor gigs. I worked on a construction site. So this, you're like, I should work hard. I mean, we're yeah. lucky to even be able to tell our thoughts into a microphone and have people listen. I, that's such a privilege already. So of course, you might as well treat it with some respect. I, I think uh, – I'm not a stand-up, but I think – uh, as a non stand up, what is funny is that, like, still to this day, you'll you'll go on online and you'll see people being like, "This is my first time doing stand up mm-hmm. since Boa," and I'm like, "How did you like?" I think that like, like pre COVID, I know there was that I'm time. not in the world of it, but I think that there is still people in the year in in the year in, twenty in, in September twenty twenty one being like, "This is my first time doing stand up in twenty one months," and you're, you're like, "Like that's not COVID." That is yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah you just don't like doing stand up that much like yes <laughs> I exactly. Feel like yeah. As someone not in it, like you just don't like doing that thing that much. Yeah, that's my fine. friends, my friends you know? would be like, oh, well, I, I don't, you know, the outdoor stuff, I just didn't really like it. And you're like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I don't know. I don't know what to fucking tell you. And I get it. Yeah. I get like, I don't like it either. I get like a certain thing, but like, I just feel like there's a, that, that window is like, you, you know, you yeah, gotta yeah, adapt yeah. at some point. Yeah, to totally. be like circumstances are perfect. The number of fucking Zoom do. shows I did, I just, oh. I just, I don't have any sympathy for. It. I mean, because like the Zoom, I mean, I made my living in December off fucking Zoom corporate shows. There you go. And I would do like five, five shows back to back, three hours in Zoom. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, it's really brutal. It's Writing new brutal. material on Zoom is brutal. Yeah. Having it work on Zoom, and you're like, I think I finished a joke on Zoom, bringing it in person, and then it bombs, and then being like, well, <laughs> now I don't trust anything I work. It was a just a horrible time. Yeah, horrible time. Horrible. Still doing any. No, no. Once I still do occasional open. corporate, occasional well, corporate do it. one. Do it for the yeah, of dough. course. But yeah, I just hate bombing at home. You know, you want to yeah. go out yeah. and bomb and come back and be like, all right, I got TV here, I got my couch. But when you bomb at home, you're like, oh, still here. That, yeah. that feeling is in the air in your dumb apartment. I hate it. I think in terms of yeah. like constructing jokes, I just that whether too. it did well or whether it did badly, I never knew for sure. I just yes. like, if, especially like a, a long one liner that I was crafting. I was like, I don't, I don't know. I, I, know. I can't tell. There's no gauge. Yeah, it's the it's the same way. I did a sidewalk show last week, which I swore off, but they tricked me, and I did it. And I'm telling like a stuff, like the the bulletproof stuff, and it's bombing. And you're like, well, this is pointless. If the A isn't working, then you'd be like, there's a homeless guy, and they'd be like, ah. And I'm like, so look, you got to take it as this is a this is an ex- an exercise. Try to make them laugh, even if your material is bombing, even if they're objectively not laughing at good stuff. 
just try to figure out and use it as an exercise to like learn how to get laughs off the cuff and all that. So there is always a a way to get something out of it. What's the doubt? Now that you 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 know you have a significant fan base, and when you headline, I'm sure on the road, you have a lot of people who like you, and you've seen the comics who have a fan base and get worse. <laughs> how yes. do you? That's pretty much all of them. All of them. Yeah, all of them. There's like four four people who I'm like, that guy's still great. And like, what's your how do you how do you break it? How do you trust? Do you ever not trust when you're at these soup? Totally. You know, when you're at a white hot show and you're like, yeah. fuck, I don't I don't know if I trust this anymore. Yeah, of course, but that's why I do all the weird shows. Like exactly, Brooklyn. I do. I go to the Queen. I did a black room in the Bronx last week. That was a whole another world. And uh, you got to mix it up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it sucks and it hurts, and you want to just go where it's comfortable, but you'll be a better comic if you don't. So okay, so you're in New Orleans. You go to college. You you dropped out of three colleges. Failed out. Failed out. Yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We're being honest. <laughs> Dropped out. And what when when it was happening? Did you did you have any plan, or were you just living day to day? Were you like, I'm gonna grow up and do this day to day? Had no comedy dream. I because I had such low self esteem. Comedy was like this. That's like being an astronaut. What am I? Yeah. Fucking Jerry Seinfeld. Get out of here. But you loved it. You liked I loved, comedy. I loved it growing up. I watched it. I consumed it. I had Marx Brothers stacked up VHS tapes. Really? I was obsessed with all Laurel and Hardy, Abbott and Costello, all that shit. S old SNL. I loved Bill Murray, all that shit. And uh, but I was just a drunk idiot from New Orleans, from Louisiana. Who the hell am I? And my pe- my parents are so smart. My brother's so smart. And I was like not as smart as them. They're intellectuals. And uh, so I just was like this loser. And I uh, worked at a restaurant. One of the other waiters did it. He said you should try it. I think you'd be good at it or whatever and i tried it and it went horribly but i just got hooked and went back it was this every the, day. the lucy's retired surfer bar well that was the second one first one was in lafayette louisiana and i how- wanted to go far away because i was so embarrassed to try it mm. yeah, yeah, yeah i didn't want anyone to know about it i didn't want to see anybody i knew so i drove three hours to do five minutes people watch me like ass. that's the guy whose house we robbed the other week oh my god <laughs> yeah exactly. we, we should give it back to him he looks like he's struggling right right did, did was that first show was there anything good that ha- anything that popped I think uh, I did. I had a yeast infection at the time. I was hooking up with a sl- soccer player chick, and she had a real. She was all messed up downtown with just the games and the sweat. Sure. So she gave me jock itch. So I was uh, talking about that, and it that did pretty well. And, yeah. Yeah, and I did a whole horrible joke. Uh, it's, she had a yeast infection. I got sourdough. Ugh, and they're like, ugh. But it got something, and I could feel like there's something here, and I just kept writing, and I was like, family feud. It's weird how they always say good answer. Even when it's a bad I Write that down. And they just have this booklet of shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you get hooked, and uh, you meet all the other comics, and we all hung out and did shit, and here's a gig out in this town. Let's go drive there together, and it was fun, and I had my world now. I never had a world. Yeah. And Never you know, I think sex is definitely my like my first bit. Like the first bit was an ex texting me, "What kind of KY did we use?" Yeah. Like there's just something about sex yes. that is so acute that you're like, something's funny about of this. Of course, well it's this taboo and it's it's universal. It's the we all fuck. You know, Nairobi to Portugal, they're all fucking, and then animals fuck, and then fucking is weird to talk about. It's like you know, yeah, risky. So that makes it funnier. So yeah. Yeah, it's always it's a it's, go-to. It's a go-to. I have so much dirty. Sometimes I think of a new dirty joke. I'm like, I don't, I don't need I know, this. I, don't I need know. This. But then I did. I did a prison gig. I think pre-COVID last year, and like, you know, I I remember uh, one of their cell doors was open, and the the walls are plastered in graphic porn. Women mm. holding themselves open. <laughs> yeah, you can see out their mouth. They're holding themselves open so wide. Oh yeah, God. and I thought I was like, these guys want to talk about sex, and I it was like noon. But I just did the filthiest set yeah. I had, and it, it was a blast. Sure, it was a blast. And these are guys; these are in prison. They haven't, you know, they haven't fucked in in decades. Right. And so, like, just to talk about it, they're just thrilled. It's so funny to them. That's great. But see, like your DMV, no, not the casino thing. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. If you can blow that out and get something out of that, to me, I'm like, that's good comedy. Like, yeah, you, this idea you had that no one else had, and it, but it makes sense. And to me, I'm like, that's the shit I want. Well, I was so scared. I, I wanted to bring it up. So I, I woke up. I, I I I tweeted. I saw, you know, Kevin Sorbo? I'm going to talk about this thing because I was so worried that you were mad at me. Oh, no. I was, so I was confused. Worried. I, so Kevin Sorbo, oh, he's yeah. Hercules. And, uh, big uh, right wing guy. Yeah, yeah. Big yeah. right wing guy and tweets like kind of just the, the most conservative uh, right wingy jokes. But there's a lot of young comics who imitate you. Oh, really? There's that's a, a lot of like. That's a shame. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it was like you you are very good in the same way Seinfeld of like a real simile, like uh-huh. you set up the simile and then you just punch it out. Yes. And so Kevin Sorbo did something about like wearing a mask in your car is like wearing a condom in bed. And uh-huh. it was just like something about the kind of the the raw simile of it. It just reminded me of 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 someone trying to imitate you. So I did <laughs> I retweeted it with like Mark Norman voice. And then some my well, one of my friends wrote you. And I I was so scared. I woke up as if I, I was worried. I was you thought I was making fun of you. I, I was, was comparing I was you worried. to Kevin Sorbo. Yeah. And I was like, no. I wake up. I'm in bed. I'm like sleeping. I'm like, oh fuck. <laughs> I remember you. Fuck. I, me I this. pissed off Mark yeah. Norman. Uh, oh, yeah. son of a bitch. Well, you know how comics are. You can call my mom a whore. You can kick my dad in the balls. But if you attack the act or your writing or whatever, yeah, yeah, then you're yeah. like, what the fuck? You can call me ugly or whatever. So I was like, is this guy going after my act? And then somebody sent it to me so it made it seem like you were yeah that's yeah, what yeah. got me if i would have seen that i'd be like ah look at that that's, that's kind of flattering and i didn't know who sent it until later i'm doing a gig and the guy one of the guys opening was like oh by the way i think i fucked up i sent mark norman this thing and i was like you, <laughs> son, <laughs> of a bitch! Uh, you son of a bitch uh, yeah that's, we we I'm, but i'm glad we that's what we humans should do sane people should, should hash it out and and talk like adults of which course. we did and it made it all better. Yeah. Otherwise, it would just fester and stew. Like, does he hate me? And I'm in the shower going, what's this guy's deal? Or whatever. It just yeah. get it out. Confront. Of course. We did one of our, one of, I think it was one of my first post-COVID. I mean, during, it was in the middle of COVID. But it was like an outdoor gig we did uh-huh. uh, with with Syrian Jews, the community. Do you, we, we went. It was Olga Namer uh, set up the gig. It was outdoors. Half the people were at the bar. There was a big pool, beautiful outdoor oh, space. Oh yes, the pool, the, the stage. The stage yes. was like covered in like a curtain, so it was very slippery. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I hosted, or maybe I went first, but it, I like went first, first. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. I like I did not do great. How many? But people? I remember you. You said something just like you. You acknowledge whenever you there's always this thing of like people will not understand when I don't do well if like it's a tough audience I'm like no one's gonna think it was the audience they're gonna think the audience course, was great course. and I sucked and every comedian knows yeah. and you said something along those lines like oh you, you really cracked him you really got him yeah. there. like kept going but I was so self conscious because it was like yeah, post COVID and it was like yeah. some of those first sets back I oh, really nightmare nightmare we're rusty they're rusty no one knows what comedy is it's outdoors it's it's like swimming with weights on the yeah. whole thing sucks yeah. and it, this was just the word half the people were at the bar and people kept migrating to the bar gradually yes, over the yes. course of the show and by the time like brian mix scott mcfadden was was the headliner yeah. but by that time 10 people were left in the audience the how bar many, was so how loud how many people were on the lineup i was like five and it was oh, like okay. it was like all like all pros yeah yeah we, we were taking we were taking them all any gig that came along yeah. at that time period we were yeah. taking them yeah, oh yeah, that that was a weird time. That was felt like apocalyptic. You know, who's got COVID? Who's yeah. who's gonna die? Are we ever gonna come back? Is this yeah. how life and is? This now? group did not take COVID seriously for sure. No, this particular group was not. I think that that's what's stressful is that you're still in a time where you're like doing things. And I like I just saw you at that the I went to your show Mohegan. at the casino, and it's a packed show. Oh, they and, don't fuck around. And you're watching, and they they they're having a great time. That you killed, but as someone you know, you're there, and I'm like. I'm vaccinated, I'm, you know, blah, blah, blah. But you're like, it's a packed room. I just feel like there's not a way to, like, fully relax and enjoy. <laughs> like, there is thing, and you had said, like, oh, I made jokes the I night before about vaccine jokes vaccines. That are, that and- are pretty pro-vaccine, but they were, I, I thought they were decent jokes, but I noticed at Mohegan Sun, like, I was they doing were- well, and then I did that, and then I fucking, half the audience went cold. Oh, and I was yeah. like, wow, a lot of people are unvaccinated yep, here. Yep. And I was just going hard at them. <laughs> and so that's in my mind, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, that's happening. So, yeah, it, it, I don't think we're at a place where people can fully just be like, and like not, you know, not aware of everything around them. Yeah, I, I worked a club. I won't say it on here, but but the the person at the entrance is supposed to check, make sure everyone's vaccinated. And obviously this is like a, a Barkton club. Yeah. Mm. It's cl- no, no yeah. way. So a lot of people would be like, oh, no, I don't have my vaccine card. And he was like, all right, just show me your phone yep. and then put it away. And then I'll just say oh my that God. I'm vaccinated. And I, and I saw it like happen in front of me. And I was just like, <laughs> oh, God. It was like, of course. Well, you think you think you think all these companies out there, they're all of a sudden going to have a tip top shop yeah, where they're going to check everyone's card to pack in the room as yeah. tightly as they can. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. The vaccine is such a fascinating sociological experiment because like I know nurses who won't get it. Wild. And- 
I, I, it's all very fascinating. And then, like, some people are like, it's the government, the microchip, and all that. And the whole country split on this vaccine. And you're like, I don't know. It's it's pretty cool. It's cool to see where people go with things. Like, oh, I didn't know you were that type of guy. I didn't know you were that good. But when it all comes down, you know, comes out of the wash, you get to see kind of who people are. Russ more. was writing a sketch yeah. about a game show where you have to guess which of your friends is not vaccinated. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because there's because some people surprising. surprising. Yes, exactly. And you're like, you can't always saying. track it. And then you're like, oh, oh, you're not like, it is like, oh, you know. And then once in a while you're like, they seem like they'd have all the indications that they wouldn't be vaccinated. Especially and in New York. Are. If I wasn't, I'd walk around and feel I like know. who's going to ask different. me. Someone's well, I'm, gonna from, say I'm from upstate, so it's like, you know. It's a little different upstate. Well, shame is real. Like, you live in New York, and I there's people in New York who don't want the vaccine, but they're like, I don't want to just be around people who have it, and they start talking about sh- how shitty people are who don't have it, so you just fucking get it. But you go out to Montana, they're like, proud to not get it. And so it's, it's I think what I don't understand is, like, I understand being scared of medicine, scared of shots. I'm more scared of my body in general. I'm just more scared of my body betraying me uh-huh. than the government. Yeah. yeah, there's yeah. such you a know? confidence in my own body. Like people have such a like. That's a, what yeah. I don't get. And, then, and, and then, they're always the people you're like, yeah, not this, yeah, no, know, this right? body, yeah. I'm a rascal. <laughs> when I got exactly. COVID, I was like, I'm, du- I'm gonna die. Like I was like, I have no, oh, you got it. I got it before the vaccine. And I was ago. like, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, I was like, I, you know, it's like it's hard not to the 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 <laughs> mental stuff around it. Sure. Like, I'm a big guy, and like I wanted but, to do a stand. I wish he did stand up because you said a lot of people were calling to check in on you. I know. I was and like, that's how you that's knew how, how people. I, that's how fat I knew I was. <laughs> that's good. Because people every day were like, it was like one of those things where like it's sweet, but I know what you're saying yeah, to me. Yeah, and right. just like. Hey, how are you feeling today, buddy? Every day. Um, yeah. But yeah. You think there's people on the far right who pretend to be more... Oh, no, wait. There's people on the left who pretend to be right online to get to get by with... The, I know people who are very on the right who pretend to be left in New York, like online. Oh, mm-hmm. sure, so sure. So they can hide in the, in the tall grass. But do you think it goes the other way? Are there people who live in very right-wing places so, who are very sure. left and they're hiding it? And online they're like, yeah, Trump 2024. But at home they're like, oh, God, I love Kamala, you know, or whatever. Yeah, I think of so many politicians. I was always so curious, all the politicians who hated dealing with Trump on the right. Yeah. Who probably went home and they're like, oh, Jesus Christ, could he just not do this one yeah. thing? I always, well, I'm sure, sure they I all. I think, though, sure. you see what's interesting right now is you see the the – the split of like people at the very, very top on the right who definitely have been vaccinated. They're working in places that are fully vaccinated. And, and then the middle level of people who really believe what they're saying, like the radio hosts that are all dying because they weren't vaccinated. And, and you're like, there's this, this level of like, there's people higher up that are like, they don't, they, they're, they're touting these things, but they're, they're vaccinated. They're fully working at Fox news, which requires everyone to be vaccinated. And they don't really like, it's not the life that they're living. Someone and then you have mid-level people who are like, I believe it fully. And then right. they're dying. Someone tweeted like, like that's a, where you can see where the grift ends, or like where the smarter people are. The smarter people in the scam are vaccinated. They're higher politicians, but this lower level of conservative mm, radio host, yeah. they don't know that what, that their people up here supporting them yeah. are bullshitting them. Yeah. So it's just like you see where that cutoff is. It's I mean, we're probably just hearing about these uh, radio people right. more often right. than others. I mean, I, but it's yeah. funny how many seem yeah. to have. Right. Yeah. It's probably yeah. I don't. You know. There's probably a lot of con- ones we're not hearing about. But yeah. So you you left New Orleans mm-hmm. and you were doing stand up. Yeah. And you're you're doing well. You're you're like. Ah. Yeah, there was like seven of us. So like, if I got a couple laughs, it was one of the better sets. Could you headline? No, God, no. Okay, so you go to New York, big move. Big move. But you had a friend uh, who was up here that you uh, knew? I knew Sean Patton up here. Sean Patton, okay. yeah. And uh, so you, you get here, but then is that when you went to the, the film school? No, that was years ago. Oh, really? Yeah. Was that one of the schools you were, you were, or do you not consider that? Is that number four? Uh, it was like a summer thing. I what is it called? This is New York Film Academy. New York Film Academy, which in my experience, and I don't fully know this, but was brutally bad. It was this bad. place that complete racket. It, and it, I they, remember I knew about it as a kid because they did were great about advertising. I remember like it was in Rolling yes, Stone magazine. Yes, they were flyers, super advertised, and it was like the school. I did a couple of the student films because uh, I was an actor first. And uh, are you from here? 
No, from DC, Maryland. Oh, okay, okay. But I, I moved right here as an actor, and some summers I did these student films. Some of the worst. They would take a lot of international students. Yes, a lot, a shitload of international yeah, students definitely. who like came to be the next Martin Scorsese, and exactly. it's easy to scam them. Yeah, and I, I just remember like being in the the third, second year, third year film, and it was like the, the biggest piece. The one I did, it was like the the whole scene was I have an STD. It's Sunday. All the hospitals are closed. So I go to my sister, who's a nurse, and I like she answers the door, and I'm like showing her my junk. Luckily, luckily, I, we didn't do that. Yeah, literally, but from behind, and she's like, "Brother, why are you making me Brother. look at your dick?" <laughs> And I'm like, please, you have to. And it was something like I got a genital piercing and then I had sex before it recovered and horrible, horrible, wow. Wow. horrible script. Wow. And uh, uh, it was okay because my sister was a lesbian. It was like, it was very can we, experimental. Can we get that online? Can yeah. we pull that up? I will try to find it. Oh, God, I will try I to hope. find it. That would be great. I, she's definitely, we're still Facebook there's, friends. There's a, there's a musical theater equivalent of that, isn't there? Like uh, New York Film Academy. Uh, I don't think they turned this film into a musical. No, no, no. Adapting no, the, no, uh, the, the... The racket. The, uh, the oh. what's that thing called? You know. Oh, like a musical? F- yeah, sure like it's a college, but it's like, it's like in New York and it's very like, it's it robs people. Um, I forget of it. The yeah, yeah, of it. I'll, I'll think of it. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. But there's, but this was this. So you went to that. I did. Yeah. And did you have dreams of being a filmmaker? I did. I wanted to be like a Woody Allen type, minus the uh, the Asian daughter. <laughs> but like, I was like, uh, yeah, I want to be Woody Allen. I want to move to New York. I want to live, baby. And I hated it. I hated all of it. I hated how how um, what's the opposite of micromanage? You know, with stand up, you're independent. You're alone. You write it. You go on stage. Yeah, Movies yeah. is like you need the actors. You need a script. You need a gaffer. You need an editor. You need all the camera guys. So I hated that part. I want to just get to it. And uh, so, yeah, I hated it. And it, nobody took it seriously. Blah, blah, blah. The whole thing sucked. My movie sucked. I remember I brought it back. Do all you my still friends, have your movie? Oh, I threw that in the fire. But, That's uh, a, put that on Patreon, baby. It Patreon was exclusive. So bad. My mom watched it. She was like, this is really bad. I could tell she was mad because she spent this money oh, on the school. Oh, and, and she, so she bad that they... Words. Oh. Oh yeah. my God! Really? She, she let me have it, and I was so embarrassed, and oh. I was wildly depressed because I was doing open mics at night during this whole film school thing, and uh, that was like, this is what I like. Fuck the fuck the school, and yeah. so I moved back home, depressed because I I didn't know it, but I was missing stand up. I was bummed, and then I moved back up, you know, after I got into stand up a little more, and then I knew the city and everything, so it was it was worth it. Do you but think it's it good? Do you think it's good that your mom was like that? Do you wish you had a mom who'd been like, oh, I see. Oh, that line was funny. I could use a little bit. A little bit. A little bit of that. Would it's be a nice. fine line. I mean, it's a. Ama- there's some. There's some comics I know with some very supportive parents, and they are very bad comics. Yes. And like, there is just like there is this. <laughs> there is this balance that if I was a parent, I really don't know, because I think I would lean towards supportive. Yeah. I think I would lean towards being like very like I'm proud of you. Constructive. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but it's 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 a tough one. It's a tough one. Yeah, I mean, look. You don't want to go too far. Like, look at the old days. You had Jewish boxers. You'll never see a Jewish boxer now because <laughs> Jewish guys are doing well or Jewish people are doing well, and the mom is there and everything. Back then, it was like, my dad died in the Holocaust. I moved here from Hungary. I'm going to box. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm desperate. And now they're all, you know, accountants. They're doing great. So it's the same with comedy. Like, are you? do you have it that good? Are your parents super supportive? It's probably not going to work out. You need a little bit of that grit, that push. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any like great comics who had great childhoods. I think Nick Kroll apparently had a decent childhood, but yeah. even still, you can have a mental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to be fucked up and see. Got There's got to be something. Got to be something. Otherwise, why would you do it? I mean, that's what does annoy me. As much as I talk about how hard I work, I hate these people who say, "Hey, being a comic so easy." But I'm like, yeah, but I also gave up a decade of my life to to just eat shit and and climb my way to the top, claw and all this, and now it's easy. But before it sucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and to stay to stay good is, is yeah tough. that too. I mean, stay sharp. You know, you're pumping out. You're pumping out a lot. You gotta pump out. That's what annoys me about these fucking suits. <laughs> these execs, they're like, here, do the Netflix half hour. I'm like, well, I'd like to get an hour. And like, just do the half hour. Then you write another half hour. You get the hour. I'm like, you know how hard it is to write a half hour? Yeah. How long that takes? How many things have to happen to you? How many failures you have to you have to have to try and fail and and tweak a, a fucking half hour? But it's the name of the game. Have you have you put out anything that you're like that was not ready? I should totally, have put totally, that out. Totally, totally. I have a Conan that's like embarrassingly bad. I really? speed through the whole thing. Like some have a million views or you know eight hundred thousand. This one has like three hundred thousand, and, and I don't blame them. It's really a poor performance. Oh and boy! My hour special on Comedy Central. I feel like there's some great nuggets in there, but I didn't know how to 
blow out an hour. I didn't know how to like close and open and pace and all that. So pretty embarrassed by that. But That's, I take clips out of it for Instagram. Like of this course. is a good bit, but yeah. as a whole. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like that. Well, I, I'm not. I write a lot, but I do not like ordering. I don't, I never, I, I, I rarely, oh, I recorded something last year, but like putting it in order is not something I've done sure. very often. That's important. And it's important. And then, but you know, I, I'm not headlining so frequently that I'm like, oh, okay, I'll do this. I'll do the new stuff. It's always just like an hour of exploring. And, <laughs> and But I'm saying like, even the art of like, what is it to put together an hour is a foreign concept to me. You know, right, to a certain right. extent, like start strong, a lot of jokes. You earned a story. Yeah, yeah. Back to jokes. Earned another story. Right. Big that's closer. Good. That's sure, good. but that's it. Like that's yeah. that's if you can write it down in a paragraph, that's not art. I mean, right. that's that's just kind of paint by numbers to a certain extent. The only way is just by doing it and failing and trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're you're doing the right. You're 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 going the right direction and of making course. progress. But it it is painful. Like there's a lot of trial and error. Was there any part of you where you, you, you release this on your own and you have your own control that then, sure. and then you go back to do the Netflix because obviously it's Netflix. Yeah, of course. You know, who can say no to that? But was there ever like, uh, you're controlling your narrative so well yeah. stand-up wise. Yeah. Everyone told, I asked 10 comics, nine of them said, don't do it. Really? Yeah. Wow. And one of them said, do it. And he was so convincing and he made great points that I did it. Yeah. yeah, more just about people seeing. Is it people who see it? Well, he he made the point of he's Nate Bargatze. I don't know if I'm, I'm supposed to say, but he did it, and it changed his life. Yeah, yeah. So everyone else I asked didn't do one, and so he's like, "Yeah, do it. It changed my life. Just blow it out. Have your best material. Kill it, and people will see it." And he's like, "You already got YouTube. YouTube is there. You got seven million, whatever. This is new groups, and it's global, and and." People will see it and be like, this has got the Netflix badge on it that they wouldn't. They go, anybody have a YouTube. I'm yeah. not watching that. Yeah. I'll watch this, though. So he had all these great points, and I was like, yeah, fuck it. And if it fails, I'll go back to YouTube. So I sure. had the option of that. How much time was there in finding out the hour and then and then doing it? Wait, what do you mean? But like the, the how, how long did you know about the Netflix that it was coming yeah. up that you had to prep that thing? Oh, minutes? not long, not long. Couple months. Okay. Wow. Yeah, because they're like, we want to get this out. We yeah, want this yeah, to be yeah. COVID y still and like have people uh still kind of stuck indoors. Yeah. You know, to get the eyeballs. Wow. Sure. That's tough. That's yeah. I mean when they rush stuff. I know. I mean I know God knows the stand up specials out there that I'm always like, they must have gotten a lot of money to pump that out really quick. Oh yeah. And you yeah. see it in the you in see the work. It? Oh yeah. And I think it I think long run it must hurt you. You know, sure. your fans, slowly some fans go, they don't need to see the next one. They don't. That's, that's what you lose. That's what you lose. You release one bad thing. I think you're right. I think and you're right. They, Unless they truly love you, they're like, ah, eh, we tried him. It's over. Same with doing the road. Like, if you go do the same show a year later yeah. with the same hour, they're like, For ah, sure. we saw this already. Because comedy's like magic. It's got to be a trick. Yeah. Or yeah. else it's pointless. Well, I talked about it where I, I was in the green room with... Jay Leno at Flappers, and, and he was like super, it was, but he, he talked about, I asked him, I said, why have you never put out a special? Wow. And, and he was like, he's like, are you crazy? I go back to Pittsburgh in four years. They don't know. They, they go, this is all new. I'm like, no, it's fucking not. They yeah. just forgot. And right. I'm like, I guess four years. Four years, maybe. Four is years. Yeah. It was very funny because he was like super, very generous, very nice, but he really talked about money in the way that I feel like maybe you would talk about money and not that not someone who has six hundred million dollars or whatever right. he has in the bank. He right. just talked about money in a way where I'm like, why does that matter to you at all? Yeah, you could just sell a car. He's nutty. He had a weird childhood, I think. And Did he? Grew, well, he grew up super poor, and he had to like start working at twelve. He's one of those guys. Yeah. Parents, like, they're from Scotland. I think his mom is Scottish, and she was off the boat. Dad's Italian, off the boat. Like he was, he was all in. Um, which which of your your jobs was the least favorite since this is the downside? What was the worst one? Uh, the least favorite was probably well, I worked at the New York Film Academy. When I came back, I was so desperate. I just showed up here with eight hundred bucks, and I I needed a job, so I went back to Film Academy and said, "You remember me? I used to go here. Can I work here?" And they were like, "All right, start sweeping." That's the only thing graduates that that's what yeah. they prepare you for is to work at the New York Film <laughs> it's Academy. The only job you can get is working there after that fucking school. So I started being a file clerk. There was a big room full of file cabinets, and I had the ladder with the wheels on it, and I, would just, I had cuts all over my hand. I still hate Manila to this day, just filing and filing. They wouldn't go digital. So that sucked. And then they made me the registrar. So I had to kick kids out oh. for not paying the bills or not um, showing up to enough classes, attendance. 
So I don't want to kick anybody out. I'm telling some Polish kid, like, yeah, you've missed 12 days in a row. You got to go. And he's like, but I don't have what good. I was like, I know. I'm, I'm trying to live my dream too, man. This is a nightmare. I, I got like an ulcer from it. It was oh hell. Like, I quit eventually. What is, what is an ulcer again? I always forget. Just stressed out, Stress. like pee and blood. And it was like this pain in my stomach. It was a nightmare. What do they have to do to fix it? You just kind of like chill out. I took some yeah. medicine and <laughs> you can't drink coffee. You can't drink booze. It irritates it. Oh my God. It was bad. I had all these cankers. It just stress stuff. But I hated that job. God, that was hell. But then I moved <laughs> furniture and I was a jan and I was like, this is this is so much better. Furniture to me, furniture in New York seems like it would be brutal. Every time I have this so someone reach out for sponsored content for a, a, a grill, a barbecue grill. And I just like it was money. There they give is. me a free grill and I was gonna give it to Russell and then Russell didn't want it. I don't have use for a grill. Yeah. I just wanted the money. And yeah. I have this grill. But like moving it up these two flights of stairs, yeah. I, I was like, you know what? Give you, him the money back. Were, I don't want to do any of this. I'm going to leave yeah. it on the side of the road. Fuck, I can't. But here's yeah. the thing with moving. The couch won't yell at you. That's what I like. No, it's I like very that. like, it, this is physical. Yes. There's no mental stress of, of the thing of like, okay, we just, and there's no like, you know, yeah, if you're doing a bad job, the, the thing is not often going to... Uh, talk back to you yeah the you confrontation of, of a day job and the how you doing the fluorescent lights could cold out there huh tough weekend that would like eat away at me yeah all mm -hmm. that shit that like corporate kind of yeah. officey yeah. jargon and that that lifestyle i couldn't handle it do you have a movie though where they like stayed with you the whole time like watch it watch it oh i've had that that's a nightmare when yeah i would watch you i remember we moved this these two gay guys we moved from uh, upper west to brooklyn beautiful brownstone they're clearly rich they had all these African artifacts and we're just like and he's like well easy well, that's that's eight thousand dollars and I'm like oh god and we got everything in and I nicked one vase and they fucking flipped on us I remember it was like this eight hour moving day it was a nightmare but did you really fuck up this vase like I chipped it and just a little about a piece of the size of a golf ball just went boop fell right <sighs> off and hit the floor and I was like ah oh, it was like the last piece it was out of a movie and they were like what the fuck that's from you know Uganda or whatever the hell so it was <laughs> yeah. it was bad those so Ugandan faces but yeah it was wild I often feel like in those circumstances you're like there was probably a moving company that was more expensive that would have been better Good than point. like my Good thing point. like i just feel like there's like you know sometimes people don't want to pay the top dollar and then but they expect the yeah the full thing well i've talked about it. mike racine moved me here and uh you know mike yeah I love and mike. and he i i went in the u-haul because he couldn't find the parking so i like stayed in the u-haul while he brought stuff in and i turned it on to turn the ac on but I, I i don't know cars i can't drive okay so i did the thing where i turned the the battery on oh and yeah so when he got there it was dead oh uh and oh, and Marco. man i think like he was being very and i'm like mike he'll scare me he's just something about him like i feel like he could cut me to the core sure i feel yeah. like he could say something about my personality totally. that would like fuck me up for the day yeah and he was like really nice about it in the moment and then later like you know after i'd paid him the money made some comment but i felt terrible yeah he's a he's like he used to be a garbage man like he's a street guy he's from jersey italian guy i wouldn't fuck with mike yeah, yeah, yeah. He painted this wall. Oh, but he he's, is he's sweet. a great guy. He's sweet. He's sweet. Yeah. He's sweet. Great guy. But Unless I just you're wouldn't... a rat, he'll fucking. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a rat, he'll fucking. I drown like he's you. got he's got that Italian thing. He's yeah, like, yeah, enough yeah. These fucking rats. Okay, yeah. and then last before we get to our, our doubts, so you're you're engaged. Yeah, crazy, huh? Congratulations. How do you like that? I never thought I would be that guy, but uh, great gal, and uh, we get along so well, and I'd like to have kids. I think so. Really, wow. I'm trying to get that sped up. Did you always want kids, or is this a no, recent thing? I think I'm getting older. I'm pushing forty. I'm gonna be thirty-eight in a couple of weeks. So uh, yeah, I guess she's been pushing it pretty hard. By the way, the, sure, the marriage sure, thing. Sure. So uh, how long were you guys uh, together? Probably five, six years. That's nice. Wow. Yeah. So it's not new. Of course. Uh, we live together. We get along. We go on trips. It's great. Uh, never had a gal this feels this right. And yeah, uh, yeah I dated a girl for thirteen years before this. So, 13 years. Yeah, yeah. Maybe 12. So wait, how old were you when you started dating her? A high school, sweetheart. Oh, wow. And you stayed together. Was there ins and outs, backs and forths? A, a little, but not really. It was one of those things where it got comfortable. We were just buddies. Uh, our parents knew each other, and we just, it was comfortable. And it just became routine. Then we yeah, moved yeah. to New York together, so that was a thing. And uh, comedy kind of got in the way, and then it fizzled. But it was an ugly fizzle. Sure. Sure. Well, the comedy is it's tough. It's uh, you tough. know, Tova, this is the first 
uh, real girlfriend I've had. And uh, at uh, least she gets the world you're in. She gets the world, but like, and, and people always say that, but like, getting the world doesn't change the feeling you have when Saturday plans right. are canceled. Of course, of course. And like, when the spot is like an unpaid spot at a ba ba ba, and I'm like, I know, but I need because I'm working. I'm, you know, yeah. I'm obsessive. I'm obsessive. Well, women love plans. They love and and that late night. They need that dinner time. They need that movie, the cuddle, the Netflix and chill. That's all comedy time. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you're losing all that. Yeah, that's the thing where I'm just like weekends. People sometimes ask me for like a Friday night plan. I'm like, no. Oh, get out of here. It's my girlfriend is or like my three best friends. Yes. get this slot. That Priority. Is it. Yeah, and also the Jewish. There's so many fucking holidays. My oh, God, there's so many holidays. Holiday. Yeah, well, Rosh Hashanah is like a long. It's a yeah. long thing. Yeah, and uh, it's just tough. It's tough. It's tough. And I, I, hopefully, I'll be at a place, or she'll be at a place. We're both we're making enough money that like. If she wants to come to, I'm headlining uh, the Albany Funny Bone the Sunday after oh. you're there for the weekend. Oh, nice! Because uh, I got all the, people commenting on tic, this TikTok, and they were like, "I'm seeing Mark Norman there," and I was like, "Come the next day too." <laughs> and they're like, "No, that's too much." Yeah. Right, right. Um, where I'll get to a place where the uh, she'll yeah. come, but I also you'll get there. There's also a thing with the road where I'm like, I get to really live that like. I'm just writing all day, doing stand up all yes, night. That's like a I nice. Love that. And I think, like, you know, the pull away and the push, sometimes that's a good for a relationship. I agree. Definitely. I agree. Definitely. Yeah, let the heart grow fond and uh, get away. And it's good to get out of the city and then come back to the city and sit in a hotel room for a full day with air conditioning and just go, like, ah. I love a good hotel. I love a hotel. I love hotels. Nobody's mad at you. You just got your feet up. You can hit the oh. pool. You can, like, really. Really, like, get lazy. You I know? like the furniture doesn't yell at you. There's no people around. Now, you said, you said, uh, do, you, do you think you're on the spectrum? I think so, which I know everybody do you ever says. Want, well, yeah, first but do you ever want everyone does say, and everyone also diagnoses other people now, too. Whenever, like, but, something is mildly weird, yeah. they'll be like, oh, he, he's always late. I think he's on the spectrum. Well, yeah. everyone technically is on, that's why it's a spectrum. Sure. <laughs> so we're all on there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I think I'm uh, definitely in there. I, I think I miss a lot of social cues. I think I'm I'm always awkward. I'm always I can't make eye contact, which is like apparently a big autism thing. I'm looking dead between. Yeah, you no, guys. I've noticed. Yeah, I noticed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's nothing. Some people take offense to it. I'm like, no, no, it's me. I'm a no, weirdo. Yeah. So, why don't you Why don't you go get a test? That's a good chunk of material just waiting for you. I did a couple things on it, but then I saw a lot of other guys doing it, so I. But take the test. What What I should would you like to know? Don't you think it'd be cool to like have an answer? Yes, of course, of course, I should. I just don't like taking tests. I still well, might that's, have that, you know what that's a symptom of being on the spectrum. No way. I, no, I'm joking. I'm just oh, saying, oh, like, take I, I the test. You. you see? Yeah. I, well, I just remember, I, I, did, I, I, I went a couple of dates with someone who had uh, uh, ADD. Oh, and, yeah, that's And I remember real. being like, oh, I have ADD. And they were like, how many times have you lost your phone? I was like, well, I've never lost my phone. And they were like, I've lost it 20 times. And I was like, oh, okay. Sure. Wow. If I, I'm a little scatterbrained. Yeah. You have ADD. Yeah. It's that kind of thing. I yeah. didn't know losing a phone was a thing. Well, with, it's, it's thing not like losing easy. phone per se, but place. it's just about like putting something down and then totally yeah. forgetting. On to the next thing. On to the next thing. Gotcha. On to the okay. next thing. Okay. But I think mild thing, like I, I've i mild OCD and I have certain yeah. things that like, it's good that I know if I want to take some medication for that particular thing. Yeah. yeah. Definitely the, one of the better things to have because A, your shit probably is organized and B, your, your stove's going to be off. You know, if you got I check OCD. It, I check it all, all the time. There it's you a go. Real, it's a real crazy thing. Yeah. Could be worse. And you're aware of it. Whereas if you're autistic or schizophrenic, you just think you're normal, but you're fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. Well, with that, let's go on to our, our next segment. This has got to stop. This has got to stop. Um, uh, Russell, I forgot to tell you, you should think of one. I uh, have this one. Gotta, oh, good. Good for yeah. you. Uh, well, do you want to start? Do you have a this? Yeah, I'll start. start. This has got to stop. Again, it's it's about you. Great. Uh, you have got to <laughs> stop calling me on the way to record this podcast. Mm. Because in my mind, uh, uh, a call is... It's canceled today. Turn around on the subway. Mm. I'm I'm 45 minutes away and I'm on the on the train. You know I'm on the train given the 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 timeline. I think he's calling. It's dramatic. I've got to turn around. And you've done the last two recordings and in my <laughs> head both recordings I've been like, "Oh, they canceled today. Okay, I'll turn around and go home." And then it's just like something unrelated at all that you could easily text and be like, "Hey, can we blah blah blah." And and so do not call me when I'm on the so way to like see talk about you. It. You have you have friends that you do podcasts with. And do you, do you ever struggle with like, you know, you you want to talk to them outside the podcast? Of course. The of communication course. is uh, 
when I'm on the subway, you know that I'm not going to be able to talk and answer while I'm riding here. It, it's in the if if it's in. I got my, it. All right, I'm just going to stop. <laughs> You're never going to get saying, a call from me again. No, you piece of no, shit. no. Call me anytime outside of the time that I'm dr- I'm on the way here because then I'm like it seems. A call is so serious. It's such a, uh-huh. a serious, dramatic thing. And so I feel like, especially if you're on the way to see someone. So I just feel like a text would be like, okay, I'm on the... I'm on, you got it. Yeah. You got it. I'm not you really mad. I'm just telling you. No, it's going to stop. <laughs> okay. I, this is one of the few times I'm in control of something that can stop. <laughs> How do you do it with, with Joe? Do you ever have a conversation with Joe? All List? the time. All the time. We, I just love him. I could sit there with him for a diner hang for five hours and talk about everything. So we do a call at least once a week. Do you have that moment, like sometimes with Russell, I know, and I fight it because in my head, like a stand up, I'm like, oh, let's recreate this moment we had on oh, the podcast. That never works. It never works. Yeah. No. But you're like, sometimes I have a conversation. I'm like, oh, this fuck. should be it. This yeah. is the story. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. is the podcast. Well, how long have you guys been doing this? Uh, <sighs> March? About, April? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. So not even a year. I think that that whole phone call chemistry or whatever you want to call it the rapport will get to here yeah yeah yeah. if it isn't already no it, it definitely feels good it's just like it's it's always an interesting thing where especially it's, it's the moment when he comes a little bit earlier yes. and we talk yes. that's the and best. Sometimes, then we're sometimes like, i want to be like shut up shut up shut up yeah this is so this is so nice especially yeah. if this is seen warm each other in a friendly. long time yeah that is nice I, i'm just so sick of comics going save it I'm like I'm telling you about my uh, my <laughs> anal fissure. Save it, <laughs> save it yeah. for the pod. Um, my this has got to stop. There's there's a, a gentleman who works at the restaurant right below here, uh-huh. and uh, one time I came out of of the door and he said hey, Henry Cavill. Which is wow, no, that's, that's not, huge. No, that's not what you look like. First of all, first of all, <laughs> what a compliment. It really, it really is not. Henry Cavill, first of all, has a huge like butt chin, which yeah. I have none of. No, I no saw butt. him at, at a restaurant in Florida <laughs> in, in Did December. Did you say Marco Or June. Uh, no, I did not. He did not look like you. He is a hunk and a half. <laughs> so, so hot. So this is like compound at one. Like, so every time I leave now, he goes, Henry Cavill. And I have to do like a, ah, uh-huh. Same joke, uh, no new celebrity, annoying. but even worse, I'm coming home from the gym one day, it's hot summer, I'll sometimes come home with shirt off or go for a run, and he, he sees me and he goes, hey, you ever want uh, help making the rest look like Henry Cavill? Let me know, oh, I do personal training. Damn. And I was like, fuck you. Kind of a dig there, yeah. yeah. That is not how how you're going to get me. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see him try. <laughs> That I, is a high bar. Yeah. Hey, you want to look like The Rock? Come see me. Right. I'm like, oh boy. Um, <laughs> but now I, so that happened. And I think like, my mom once told me a story. She had a hairdresser. And like the way he would like get her would be like, who who did your hair last time? Come, I'll fix it. Uh, and my mom told me a story oh. one day that she was like, when you fuck off? Like my mom yeah. did like, the, go fuck yourself. That's Good. not how you get my business. But I didn't do it with him. And now he says the Henry Cavill every time I see him. And I just, I just want to be able to leave my apartment without saying hello to anyone, of any course, of that small talk. Yeah. You know, and I'm the, stuck. The key, you got. What does he look like? We got to get him. Hey, Bob Hoskins or whatever. Yeah, you got to sure. get him with a kind well, of a he's, he's, John Goodman he's, over here, huh? Whatever it sure. is. <laughs> he's black, so it's got to be a white celebrity. I think the only. I think the only way to really is I got to. It's got to be like a white person so that we know it's clear yeah. of yeah. any kind of Henry like Cavill you look is like. A very right. funny choice it's just a very funny choice because he's not around that he's not much. the most famous we're not guy. like yeah he's not like in so many things he's, where he's right on the top of it's our funny brains. like i walk away then some short fat blonde guy walks up he's like henry, <laughs> hey, Cavill, henry Cavill. Cavill. that's just his line it's uh, the only white celebrity he knows right. i wouldn't like it too because then i feel like people at the restaurant they could overhear because they eat outside and they'd be like that guy doesn't look like and then they're judging you and you're like i'm ah, not saying it yeah. this guy's saying it you know can we say the thing about the casino who they thought you were Oh yeah! <laughs> he went to Stephen Mohegan's son. Oh yeah! And and apparently they were like the bouncer. Oh, fuck. Tim the, Dillon's here. Oh. I was Tim Dillon, and they were like, they got all excited. They were ready to bump me off they, the headline. He went and got the manager and was like, Tim Dillon's here, and he told me after the fact, and I was like, oh, <laughs> like I. It was just funny to imagine you getting bumped for yeah, yeah, yeah. me as Tim Dillon. Was, was he black? The guy who said it. Yeah. Okay, I think we yeah, see yeah. a pattern here. <laughs> Whitey looks alike, but I think the hair is similar. I could see it, maybe same yeah. height. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I I can see it in certain things. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. It's just less of a compliment than Henry Cavill. Yeah, yeah. Henry Cavill's like Is that Henry Cavill and Tim Dillon hanging out together? (laughs) (laughs) What a combo. Um, uh, You got to, this got to stop? I mean, I have so many. I do a whole thing on my pod called Pet Peeves and like. Oh shit. uh, I swear to God I hadn't heard it. No, I know. I think it's a very common podcast. It's common, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, first of all, I had this on the way over here. The guy in the insanely loud motorcycle that goes through the residential areas, like, ah, and you're like, what are you doing? Like, I can't even hear the TV because of your motorcycle. Yeah, I yep. hate that guy. Or the guy playing loud music out of his car. Brutal. Hate yeah. that guy. And you're like, who is this for? Do you enjoy this? Yeah. You're in a car blasting. Well, what do you think it is? I think they must have a couple people who go like, hey, yeah, I think and that's for that, it. And they like that. that's, that's, that's all it. it's for. I think you're right. And those are the people that have to Stop. put away. They're right. encouraging this behavior. Yes, I think, I think you got something there. I also hate this guy. And this is a little more esoteric. You ever have the guy who asks you the question that's insulting, but you can't really get mad at him? Like one time I had a party and there wasn't a lot of people there. My friend showed up and goes, where is everybody? And I'm like, I don't fucking know. They hate me. What do you want me to say? <laughs> I hate this guy. Yeah, it killed yeah. me. Like shit like that always always gets me. I did a housewarming party, well, especially when I first moved to you New York. Did I did a housewarming know. party? Or you, like, I you, had one like in my old Harlem apartment oh, and like to. I wasn't a social guy. No, I threw one. And like, oh. man, you know, the first hour where no one showed up, well, because people go to parties late in general. Mm -hmm. They always show up an hour into yeah. like a house party. But that first hour where no one was oh, there. Oh, tough. And I had like Christmas lights blinking yes. and a table full of food. Oh. And I thought, I'm, a, I, I'm, I'm a about loser. to find out I have a suck. That yeah. I suck, that no one yeah. likes me. Same with a show. You ever run a show and there's no one there for like 20 minutes. And you're like, I guess we'll start with two people. And then they kind of trickle in. You're like, thank God. Well, that's, a, I think people... I'll go to shows like that, and the producer will like bend over backwards to apologize yes. to me, and I'm like, "Listen, I ran a show. Yeah, I, I, I have no anger towards you. Totally, you're trying to put this thing on. And I remember, I mean, I remember having you on on uh, the Last Laugh, which was my show. Yeah, and like, man, it was brutal. I remember having Sydney Sydney Washington once, and there was like one person there, and she like she looked like she had like put herself together for the yeah. night. It's one thing with like dude comics, like you know, you look like shit. You right. weren't planning for anything, but Sydney like looked like she had put on makeup for it. I was like, yeah. "Oh man, no, I feel bummer. like a piece of shit." Yeah, damn. Yeah, it sucks. All that shit sucks. I hate running a show. I still run two shows. I hate it. Yeah, but it's Wait. at two clubs, so I feel like it's a little on them. But yeah, you yeah, still yeah. got to promote. You still got to do the legwork. I'm. To, I I stopped. I think about going back sometimes just to get more. Sp just because when you're part, but I, 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 it's you a end job. Up, I said you, you, if you want to, I said if you want to create a lot of, uh, uh, superficial friends quickly and long term en uh, enemies over a long period of time, yes, there, there are producers that I hate of because course. they've never booked me on anything for years, five years of being in comedy, and I'm sure they forgot, whatever, who knows why, yeah, but in my heart, I'm like, I hate them, yeah, I hate them. How, how <laughs> you never, not a single time, not yeah. a single, not a single time. I know. And I hate him. And I'm, I'm with you. We all we're we're petty and we're so insecure. I mean, it's it's inevitable. There's so many people who hate so many people, and there's so many loud personalities that they're all going to clash. It, it's inevitable. And we talk shit. My God, I mean, when I'm in the car with someone. Oh yeah. Oh, and luckily, yeah. I mean, we just talk like crazy. And I think Jeffrey Asmus once wrote just if you really think about like how much shit people must talk about you. Yeah. Given how much shit you're talking about, of course, the yeah. of course. Yeah. it's really over. It's really a horrifying. It's thought. horrifying, but it's the great equalizer. You know, like you get into a car with four guys, you're all talking shit, and then you're in a car with another four guys, you might end up talking shit about somebody in the last car. It just it happens. Oh boy. Well, let's. Uh, <laughs> that was a good, nice negative. Let's get to a. Uh oh. There we go. One. Your blessing. Blessing. Had to, to make this feel nice at the end, Russell, you got a blessing? Yeah, I don't. It's a quick one. Um, our dog, our new dog, he is really good at uh, walks. And that sounds stupid, but our last dog hated walks uh, and wanted to kill himself on walks and was super anxious. <laughs> I would love to see a, a suicidal dog. Uh, no, just like was like, get me the fuck back home. Like, he's not just chasing like, cars. He's running he into the really car. He just really wanted to go back home always. And this new dog, uh, but also... Obviously, rest in peace, Hennessy. Loved you. <laughs> but uh, the new dog loves walks and is like, walks at the right tempo. It's not a lot of like, come on. like It's like he's just walking at the right tempo and he's good. And it's like, uh, we've been training him on walks and it's been it's been great. And so All right. uh, that's my, that's it's been nice. It's been, it's been great to, uh, after a couple of few years, like go on nice long walks in our, in our, in Inwood Hill Park and mm -hmm. like take like nice walks and not have to like, worry about like anything with the dog great my blessing i i've you know starting to do more weekends on the road i sell merch mm -hmm. and suddenly i have a lot more cash 
yes. than I normally do. Good oh. one. And there's something emotional about cash. So I go to this beach and I'm just, I, you know, I have $400 in cash yes. in my wallet. Wow. And I'm just like spending it at the beach. And like, for some reason it's disconnected from me, like losing Being money. Real. And yeah. I feel great. And, and I, uh, they, we, we told her and I laughed because at some point she, she, I was going somewhere and she was like, can I have some cash? Yeah. And I just very much like, of course, of course, lady, yes. take it. I have plenty more yeah. here. And then there's, of course, there's a sadness when I go and I'm like, oh, it, it's gone. It ran out. Of course. <laughs> but it I happens. really just like having this. I, I feel like I'm a working man. Yeah. I, I, they handed it to my hand. I gave them a thing. Yes. And it feels good. It feels yeah. good. Merch yeah. feel, it's a nightmare to do. You got to yeah. stand there and everybody's spitting on you and drunk and taking photo headlock. But once you got that cash, it's all worth it. Yeah. I my merch is connected to a bit, mm. which I will not do again. It's like it's a it's just a long chunk that I have to do every time. Right. And it's loud and it's dirty, so I can't do it for clean shows. Mm. Uh but that I'm trying to figure out my next my ne it works though. And it's one of these things I have like five jokes for the merch at this point. <laughs> That's how long I've had yeah. this merch. Yeah. yeah. But uh, uh I look forward to kind of more generic merch yes. you have the the comedy t-shirt that's that was, perfect i couldn't think of anything but i could sell that thing for 100 years yeah and people great. like comedy so they wear they buy the hat and they wear it to the show comedy how all. do you do the shirts though i i can't tell you the number of times i've been with people who sell shirts and someone's like i'd love a medium and they go ah, do, extra 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 large okay there, yeah and it's like you have to carry all these sides they it's always they're, of course they're out of mediums yeah, yeah. and i'm like yeah. how many extra yeah I just get a, I kind of tally it in my head, like, all right, the mediums always go first, so I'll get a ton of medium. Nobody gets a small, I'll get five smalls. It's that, it's just, you know, over time, you kind of see where it goes. But then you go to Fat Towns, and you're like, I'll get a lot of double X's. And then you go to LA, you get a lot of X or extra small. So, you know, it varies. You got to profile the place. That's that's a good point. Yeah, you go to a casino, fat, get a bed sheet. Yeah, fat, <laughs> beach fat, towel. Wild, fat, big, fat. Oh yeah, oh man! We just walk into the gig and there's just like a you know overweight guy lying on the floor. You know, casinos like people are having medical issues. All the I'm sure there's oh, a yeah. full running yeah. hospital at Mohegan Sun. They're still yeah. smoking with the respirator. Yeah, yeah. They're, yeah. they're using the carts, big carts, and you know it, it, he was just lying there. You know, shorts falling down. Ten people attending to yep. him. Yep. And uh, I, it was just a, a sad. Yeah. Sad sight. Well, it's a bad you don't go scene. to a casino for a good, like a, a heartwarming story. I mean, it's a sad place. Yeah, you know? yeah. But you did really well. You ever have someone <laughs> die during a show? A medical emergency during a show? Uh, never the death. I've had the heart attack. I've had the scare. Like, oh god, or whatever. And like, they got to wheel them out and stuff. But no deaths. I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want that. That's that would make sure. me sad. Yeah. I was one time doing an outdoor theater show and someone died of a heart attack during the show. They had to get a, it was out very far out in the country. They had to get a helicopter what? to land to like do a medical evac. The show started like 45 minutes late. So it hadn't quite started and yet. And it was like, it was like one of those things too where they, were, they hadn't started yet. It was like, they were, it was like 45 minutes before the show. And, but then in like the helicopter had to come and like things were happening. But it was one of those things too where like they felt the need to tell us all that that person did die. <laughs> And then they're like, and but like we're still gonna do the show, and you're like, okay, we could have just, you know, was it on the God mic, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen? No, no, it was like an announcement. It was like save a, your prayers. They pulled us all together. It was a huge cast, like seventy people, and they they pulled us all together to tell us Whoa, that, 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 that person poor host. had died. That host had to really make that funny somehow because you um, got to address it. Well, no, it was like a, it was a theater show, uh, what so was we this? did not what address show? it. When I did that outdoor, uh, it was called Texas the Musical Drama, and it was uh, all about. Texas and the uh, Texas yeah. the yeah. musical drama. Yeah. That was the last abortion it's in Texas. It's Texas forever. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It's a. It was a nightmare. I mean, it was. I had so much fun doing it, but it was really. It was propaganda. It was like. It was just all oh, about really? like. Well, it was about the history of Texas and like how great it is and like. There was, I mean, I remember there was a line in the opening song where, um, where all the men sang, um. Uh, no, all every all, the whole chorus sang where the women are happy and the men sang and never complain. Whoa! <laughs> Did you do it with fish shaking? Everyone like, like, everyone's like, "Whoa, yeah!" Um, but yeah, it was it was a night. I mean, it was it was not great content, but I had so much fun doing the show. It ended with fireworks every night. It was a huge. There's got to be a video spectacle. of that somewhere. We got to get. Oh it. yeah, I, there's a, it's a big thing. It's like a, two thousand people came to see it every night. It was like a tourist thing like in texas and it was like is it built into the a wall of a canyon it was a huge amphitheater it was it was a, it was 
wild. It was a wild experience. I'm going to find it. We're going to yeah. get a soundtrack about it. Um, do you have a, a blessing, Mark? Sure. I, I think this is a great segment because uh, all we do is bitch and moan and online all day. So this is like, this is nice that people can appreciate. No one is gracious. Gratitude is done. Uh-huh. So uh, I got so many things. I'm First of all, I want to say how lucky are we that the internet exists? I mean, the internet is, it's almost like fire or water where it gives you life and it helps you, but it can also ruin your life, yeah. drown you or burn your house down. So it's like that, but... If we didn't have the internet, we couldn't do this. We'd have to wait for the uh, the Comedy Centrals of the world to knock on the door, and you go, "Finally, you you caught me. Here we go. P- please put me on TV. Like mm-hmm. we can do anything we want. We got this fucking TikTok and the laptops and all that. So thank God for the internet. Good. Yeah, we can do whatever we want. Put shit out there. You can email your mom. You can book a. Just think about like calling the the uh travel guy you know like to get to a flight you had to, you had to call a guy yeah yeah, yeah. You know, now it's just like beep, beep, beep. i did on my app i got a new ticket the difference yeah. is the thing with especially as an artist like there is a certain thing of like look you you here's the tools if you mean you, you make your make yeah. it yourself yeah exactly like i i came from this actor school and it was very much was like you know you can find the casting directors and they elevate you to this place and then you get on the show. It, it was it was a system, and you yeah. just played into the system. And in the internet, it's like, you can make it your own way yes. if you want to. You, you have nothing to blame. Yes, I anymore. love the no blaming. And it's uh, it's overwhelming, but but yeah, that's why just doing stand up felt more. I could do things. Yes, yes. Being an actor sucks. Oh yeah. Oh my god. It's a crazy notion to like they'll pick me because you have to get <laughs> that part. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, think yeah. I was talking to you the other day. Like I think like the the whole central premise of acting. Like Daniel Day Lewis was one of my favorites. Sure. And I like for a class I did uh, uh, Christy Brown, who he played in My Left Foot. Like I did a scene as someone with cerebral palsy. Wow. And I like I like got a wheelchair and I invested and it was so much of the premise of acting was. I want to embody someone else. Mm. And so much of like kind of more related to job opportunities now in acting, it's like, that's not your place to speak on. That's not your story to tell. Mm. And so there's something very different. Like Stanislavski would have been like, I mean, you know, Stanislavski would have done Othello in blackface. Like right. he would, it would have been like, a, let me embody this thing. Yes. And now with more people as artists and, and people understanding who was neglected in that former t- f- uh, framework, there's like a, well, you can't do that. Oh, interesting. How could well, this? And I, I think I think it'll extend. And I don't know whether it's good or bad, but it's just like the whole central premise of acting, which was embody someone else take over an experience you could never know but do it to your best abilities Mm. it's not necessarily noble anymore yeah yeah good point give it to the person yeah give it to the person why should you figure out what it would be like to be a a a blue collar sarah paulson a (laughs) fat fat there's totally there was a time where it'd be like wow you really walked like you were fat yes (laughs) Yes. How yeah, incredible. Yeah. What do you think about that? Uh, like the, uh, hey, you can't play a woman. You're not a woman. Hey, you can't play a handicap. You're not a handicap. Like, I think isn't that, that acting? I think there's a certain degree of like, there's so much money being made. Like, I, I do think where it's like with, I think where like, uh, uh, who who won the Oscar? What's his name? He played a trans person, someone who transitioned over the course of the movie. Eddie Redm- or Eddie Redmayne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, he, yeah. And there, there was a lot of pushback. And I, I do think there's an argument to be made like, look, here's a story that is like a thrilling story. You producers, go do the work to find the yeah. trans actor who can fucking nail this mm. as opposed to relying on the star. And I'm sure their argument is like, look, we need to get the movie financed. Yeah, we yeah. need to get the fucking star. Yeah, sure. But I think like, I'm like, yeah, go make, the, the, I don't feel sympathy for the producers. You want to tell the story? Go find, go find it. Because I'm sure, I feel the same way with like, it's the same with comedy where they'll like, they'll be like, let's diversify. Okay, we'll search right, all of UCB right, right. to find the best uh, non uh, whatever comic at UCB and I'm like how well, about you anymore. go to fucking Harlem and go find the funniest person there because they're there they're they just there. don't go through your regular fucking pipeline yeah. that you're lazy about no, and then I they'll agree. hire a black guy because he's black and you're like there's so many funny black guys or of black course. women what are you crazy especially at stand up comics we know I mean especially just we, we know but they're just not in the, the regular channels right, right. I, I've certainly have, I've done shows in Harlem where I'm like this guy's maybe of the course. funniest guy in the whole Same. fucking world totally yeah. but they'll never find him yeah, which is why the internet is great. That guy can put some shit online, and the internet is the great equalizer where, like, you have to actually be good. Yes, yeah. It helps if you're hot or something. That doesn't hurt. But if you, over time, if you're not good, it'll fizzle. Um, quality. 
Well, I, I do like that. The internet, I, I will say, I do think the internet will ultimately, though, lead to, to misinformation. The deep fakes, you posted sure. a deep fake of you today. Did I? In, uh, in, in Indiana the, Jones. In Indiana Jones. Yeah, yeah. And I think deep fakes will eventually erode our ability to believe in anything. Oh, uh, good point. And will be the end of our species. This is the downside. One, two, three. Downside.